I am Amanda. I am uh, the crochet designer at flyingmarsupial.us. This is my buddy Stanley. Um, but today we're going to do something a little different. We're going to do a sewing tutorial. And he's going to help me out, I guess, because he is super comfortable in my lap right now. So, um, <laughs> this is our supply list of things that we're going to need. Um, we are going to need some fleece. I can't tell you how much fleece we're going to need because we're going to measure that out a little later. Um, I would do something between um, like a yard plus. Uh, you can use one or two colors. If you're going to use two colors, you could probably get away with a half a yard of each. Um, depending on the size of your uh, your measurements. So this is all kind of up to you and I'm going to show you how to make it custom sized. Okay, so um, we're also going to need a cutting mat and a rotary cutter um, Unless you're using scissors and that's fine, too. Um, you can also use scissors and I suggest a straight edge as well I didn't put them on the list, but you're gonna need some type of straight edge. Stanley is really into this list um, so <laughs> Thank you, buddy. So um, also, we're all going to need scissors. It doesn't really matter um, if you're using the rotary cutter or not. You're going to need scissors at some point. I'm sure we'll get caught up and need scissors. So uh, also, you're going to need a bowl or a plate or something round that is big enough to hold some gliders. So I would suggest a bowl, like just a bowl from your kitchen, whatever you got, whatever you're into. It's not... Um, it's not a perfect science and it's not going to matter what size you use. Um, I would just pick something that's big enough for your gliders. You can use like an oatmeal container or whatever. Um, oh, it's scary, Stanley, shush. So also, um, you're gonna need a pen or a pencil and some paper. And you're also gonna need your sewing machine, obviously, because we're gonna do some sewing today. So um, those are the things that you're going to definitely need. If you want to add anything extra, you can watch all the way through the video and see if there's anything extra that you're going to need to add. And um, we'll get there when we get there. Just watch the whole video before you try to start because this one's a little complicated. It's a little bit more difficult than my previous videos that I've done. So um, what I'm teaching you to do is a little bit of a custom design. And I just want you to understand 100% completely before you start so that you don't go through a ton of fleece before you get it right. All right, um, next up we're gonna learn some math. So there's a couple things that we need to learn first and that's how to get the measurement for the big flat piece that we're gonna use that goes all the way around the outside, the one with the hole in it, okay? So we need to get that measurement, and to get that measurement, we're going to have to do a little bit of math, okay? So to do this, you're gonna to need to, whatever you're using as your circle, whether it be like a bowl or a plate, whatever you're using, okay? Um, I suggest using like a bowl from your kitchen, but if you have like a lot of gliders, use a dinner plate. I ain't judging, whatever you need, okay? So, get your circle, and what you're gonna do is measure all the way across your circle, okay? And that's called the diameter, okay? So the diameter, we're gonna take the diameter, and we're gonna multiply the diameter times pi which is 3.14 something, something, something. It doesn't matter. We're only going to take it and multiply it by 3.14 because anything else is overkill. And after that, we're gonna take that number that we get. So take this number and we're gonna round it up. And that'll give us some seam allowance. So whenever we're sewing, we'll still have a little bit of room to connect those edges and sew against that and everything will still fit together just right, okay? Okay, so what we have here is our piece of paper and our bowl. I have a tiny little bowl and I don't want to work with a whole ton of fleece, so I'm just gonna work with this little guy and it'll have the same effect. So here's my bowl and I'm just going to carefully outline And I'm using a bold marker. I don't suggest that you do because it will 
do this and then you will have a mark on your bowl. So my bowl is not an expensive bowl, it is an Ikea bowl and I got them for $5 in like a 10 pack. So, all right. Um, next, you're gonna wanna measure across, right here, across your circle. And this is about um, four and three quarters that goes all the way across. So remember how we were talking about what you wanna measure all the way across your circle? So that's mine and it's 4.75 across. So, that's mine, 4.75. Now you're gonna take that 4.75, my lighting is terrible in here. So you're gonna take that 4.75 and then we're gonna multiply it by 3.14, which is pi or a shortened version thereof. Now, Whenever I did it, um, mine came out to a little under 15 inches, okay? So um, it was like 14.9 something. So 14.9 uh, two, I think is what I got. Um, it, so that's really not that big if I round it up to give me much seam allowance. So I'm gonna go ahead and just round it up to 15 and a half to give me at least a half inch of seam allowance. So this is gonna be the number that I need is 15.5 inches. And I'm gonna write all of this on here so that the next time I use this as a pattern, it will still be here and I won't have to redo the math on everything and draw my circle and all that. So just draw it on your pattern. Otherwise, you're gonna have a big old problem later. Next, we're gonna cut it out. Just do your best cutting your circle. Okay. And this we can toss. This is done. Okay. So, um, we have our template for the bottom and the top, and that's how we get that, okay? So um, now we're gonna make the sides. Okay, so I have all of my materials ready. Um, I've got a couple pieces of fleece that are just scrap fleece that I'm gonna work with today. Um, I'm not real worried about working with great fleece because I'm just doing this as a demo. So, um, I've also got pins. I didn't put pins on the list originally, but then I realized not everybody is magic and can hold the stuff still like I can. So I'm gonna go ahead and double over this fleece so that we cut two at once, okay? And then just pin your pattern directly to both sides. You don't have to be quite so wasteful with yours. <laughs> you can put it down in here and then actually get a lot more stuff out of this fleece if you'd like to. Just pin it on there. Make sure it's not going anywhere, not moving. Okay. Okay. So. Then you're gonna take and cut this out. Or there's two that I've cut out. I'm gonna need four of these. Two for the bottom, two for the top, okay? So, grab that up. And again, okay. Okay, so, we have four little circles now. And we're gonna put those aside. Now, um, something that's kind of important, uh, pay attention to the stretch of your fleece here. You can tell that my fleece, cut some of this off so that you can look at it better. Um, so my fleece stretches more this way than it does this way, okay? It barely has any stretch this way. And we want to pay attention to that because we're gonna make our tabs here, okay? So the stretch goes this way. This is the way that it stretches easily. It goes from left to right the way I have mine. 
Okay, so to cut the tabs, I only want three tabs on mine. You can cut four or five, however you want to do yours. But I suggest making them about three inches long and about an inch wide. It doesn't have to be perfect. So there it is. Okay, there's my three tabs. I've got my three tabs, which are the same color as my top and my bottom. So I need four circles and three tabs. If you make yours bigger, you may need more tabs to make it stable. Okay. Okay, this is where things get heated. This is where this measurement comes in, this 15.5 that I got. This is where this comes in and is important. This is our diameter times pi to get the circumference of the circle, okay? So we needed the circumference so that we can make our sides. Now, my handy dandy cutting board here has numbers on it and it's beautiful. So I can just go, okay, here's my 15 and a half point and I can cut mine off here. Okay, and just line it up and cut that straight, okay? Now I'm gonna do that with both of my sides. This is my other side. This is my 15 and a half point. I'm gonna line it up on both sides and cut it straight. And we can use all that for blankies later. Now the height, the height isn't such a big deal. Um, the height is your preference. So however tall you want to make this so that it feels good to you, that's as tall as you make it. I'm going to make mine nine inches about. So I'm just going to cut off my edges, really. Mine is going to end up really small, guys, just so that you know I'm not making mine to be used, really. So mine's going to end up pretty small. And this is only for demoing. Okay, so now we've got our sides. Okay, so we have both of our pieces of fleece and they're laid out flat. Um, these are the side pieces. And we want to lay those side pieces pretty side in. Um, if you have an anti-pill fleece or a printed fleece, you'll notice that one side is a little bit dull and the other side is very bright. So make sure that both of the bright sides are facing each other when you put them down and face them, okay? So we're gonna pin a circle right here in the middle that's big enough to get your fist into, okay? Um, if you need a guide, use a guide. I don't necessarily need one. I just suggest putting pins across from each other and then again, across from each other. So that it makes a square. You can kind of see my square here of my pins, okay? And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna sew round, 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 round to each one of those midpoints on the pins, okay? So, so that you can see that, um, I'm just gonna go ahead and sew it. So we're ready, we're gonna take all these pins out, okay? And we're gonna put them back in their little, their little container over there. Now you can see my circle is not amazing. It does not have to be beautiful. This is just for your gliders to get in and out of. Now make a snip right in the middle of that circle, okay? I wish you could see this better. Can we zoom in on that? No, not really. Okay. So, see how I have made like a little snip right here in the middle? We're going to do that. And then we're going to take our scissors and cut one side all the way around in a circle. Okay? 
And mine's more like a little oblong weirdness thing happening. But like I said, I don't really care. This is for the demo video and I'm not trying to be exact or anything. And it's still gonna look nice. Whenever it comes out, it'll be fine. Now cut all of your circle all the way out. Do not cut over any of the stitches. Okay, so now we have a hole in the middle of where we cut. Now, very carefully cut through both sides to that circle to get rid of any tension and release that tension, okay? So, just cut through, nip through probably every half inch all the way around, but don't cut through your seam where you've sewn. Just cut right up to it. It doesn't have to be perfect again. Imagine that. Okay. So, some of my spaces are too small to cut, but you just want to cut the ones that are a little bit further out. Anyway, those are the ones that cause tension. Okay, now what you want to do is you want to take the outside, okay, the, the front side that's facing you, and you want to curl it up, and you want to shove it through that circle, okay? And then you want it to come out the other side, okay? So now you can see that my circle that was not very pretty before is pretty, okay? And that's how we put a circle in something, okay? So that is big enough to put my hand through. And now we just need to sew everything else up. I'm gonna take these sides together and I'm going to pin them like a butterfly. So these are the outer edges, right? Your circles in the middle. Don't go the long edges together. These are the short edges. So take your two short edges and put them together. And pin them up so that they stay straight while we're sewing. Okay, so pro tip y'all. Uh, while I was making this video, I totally forgot to put a turn hole in. This is where you would put your turn hole in, okay? So, um, <laughs> when we're sewing the sides up, this one's almost done. So anyway, when you're sewing those short sides up, you want to leave a hole. And you want to leave a hole that's big enough to turn things, okay? So I usually do about three fingers wide, boop, and that's about good enough, okay? So I had to go back and recreate my turn hole. And nobody loves doing that. So put a turn hole in right about here where I'm going to insert this into the video because I totally messed up. Okay, sorry about that. Proceed. Sew one side and then come around and then sew the other side so that they're in a tunnel formation. This is how we will get our tunnel. Okay. Now you've got your, your pouch pretty much sewn up. So here's a look at kind of what it's gonna look like when we turn it right side out. So now, whenever you turn it around, you can kind of see what it's gonna look like. It's round, you can see into it. Mine has a huge hole, yours doesn't have to be that big. But you can kind of see, you can see into it. It's a tunnel, basically. A little, little open tunnel. Okay. Let's take it back inside out. And make sure that all your seams are facing out. Because if you turned it inside out, and then you don't turn it back, 
where you can see all of your your sewn seams, you're gonna be in a heap of trouble. Okay. So just pin these around and then come back and sew them. They should fit perfectly. Now this is what each of your four inserts should look like. So this is the end. So you're gonna do this with all four ends. You don't have to do them all at once, but make sure that you pin them so that they don't walk while you're sewing them. Now I'm gonna sew them together one at a time and then um, you'll be able to see what mine looks like at the end. Now remember on one of your, um, your little end pieces, your end caps, your circles that we made, you need to remember to put in your tabs so that you can hang it up. I mean, if you don't want to hang it up, that's fine. But I suggest doing it on like the first or second one just so that you don't forget by the end. But make sure that these make it in. Now, you want to fold these over and face them inward. You want the two little tabbies facing outwards, okay? Like it should look like four pieces of fleece stacked on top of each other on the outside. So pin all of that together so that the loop shows up on the inside. So it should look like that when you pin it and the loop should be in here, okay? Okay, so we wanna make sure that we snip off all of our excess so that we can make sure that our gliders tootsies aren't gonna get stuck in there if they should get inside this pouch. Now I do wanna point out that mine, whenever I moved, I recently moved, my tension got bumped and I didn't notice it because it was on the back side. So this is what it looks like. It's very unsafe. Whenever um, your tension isn't right, I just want you to see this is unsafe. I'm not gonna sell this pouch. This pouch is not going in with any sugar gliders. But I just wanted you to see so that you can know what that looks like. Um, this is an absolutely 100% unsafe seam. Um, <laughs> just in case they should dig into the inside. Now, that aside, I have all of my tops and bottoms on here. I have the top that has the, um, the loops in it so that you can hang it. And I've got all my feet in here. Okay, y'all remember at the uh, beginning of the video whenever I totally screwed up and didn't put a turn hole in and then I inserted the video in there? Okay, this is where I'm at now. So um, <laughs> now you have your two sides, okay? And they're connected and they both look like little tubes and they're connected by this hole in the middle. And what you wanna do is get your turn hole that exists um, <laughs> and turn them right side out, okay? So you just wanna take the inside and pull it all the way through. Now, if you feel comfortable with your hand stitching here, you can hand stitch this closed. I do not feel good about my hand stitching, so I'm not going to hand stitch this closed. In fact, I'm going to use my machine to close this little hole up, okay? So everything should have hidden seams. There should be hidden seams everywhere. Make sure before you close it up that everything looks good and glider safe, and then close your turn hole up. So that little hole that we just turned everything through, so everything should look like this now. Safe seams, okay, everywhere. Take that little hole and close it up, okay? Take the tightest stitch you have on your machine and sew it up. Okay, so after you have your turn hole all sewed up, you're gonna need to cut these little ends off, your little threads off. And a lot of people ask me why I use a contrasting thread to what I'm working with because I'm working with black and I'm using white thread right now. And that's so that I can see or my customer can see 
in their pouch um, whenever they're using it at home. Say something comes loose, you can see it. So now you've got this weird little wonky two-sided tunnel to tunnel thing that has its little tabs and everything on it. So you wanna make sure the tabs are on the outside and then you stuff this one into the inside. I'm sorry, my dog is going crazy and I really can't help it. Um, he likes to bark at neighbors. So now we have a tunnel that is also a pouch and you can hang it up and they can get in there and you can get your hand in there and it's awesome.